There's some breaking news that's come across the wire in the last 30 minutes. The Israel approved entry of humanitarian aid to Gaza from Egypt after U.S. pressure. So Joe Biden goes to goes to Jerusalem, meets with uh, with Netanyahu and says, you know, those the billions of dollars of arms we were going to give you. Well, unless you get humanitarian aid to the guy ga into, into Gaza, um, say goodbye to that. And and Netanyahu basically loosened the noose on Gaza on a Hamas. Um, and is effectively saying no, they, you know, the neighboring Arab states in Egypt don't want refugees out of Gaza. And so instead, what they're going to do is they're going to flow a bunch of humanitarian aid to Gaza. And what that means is essentially you're going to have a lot of citizens who are, you know, people who are civilians who are going to be sitting there and they're not to get the humanitarian aid and they're not going to be they're not going to be leaving the war zone and it's going to cause a lot more civilian deaths and every one of the civilian deaths would be laid on israel's doorstep but i want you to understand what this is your president of the united states telling israel that the murderous hordes who came across and, and targeted citizens are now are now having the leverage point of saying oh well that we can't have civilian deaths the reason there's civilian deaths is because they targeted citizens, folks. And so this is the result of having Joe Biden be president. He's going to come back. He's going to, he's going to present a, a package. There will probably be uh, some military and a lot of humanitarian aid that goes in into it. And it wouldn't, not having seen it, but just guessing. And that, and that is, so that's politics in the United States. And meanwhile, we're going to, we don't have a speaker who will stand up to Joe, to Joe Biden and tell him no. That's the that's the bottom line. So that's what happened in Israel right now. And it, it's contextualized directly to that vote you see. Um, Joe Biden believes that he can he can basically leverage everybody on this. So just understand that you know real world consequences to events that are happening. And it's a and the fact is People in Gaza who are innocent civilians are going to die because they did not they did not leave Gaza, and they did not leave a very small area which is a war zone, and there is almost no way to stop that the civilian deaths that the civilians are sitting are being used as human shields by Hamas. So that's what that's the Biden policy for you, and that's what Israel got leveraged into, and now. We're going to have an aid package tomorrow from the Biden administration. It may even be transmitted today. Um, and the House representatives and spending bills have to start in the House until they have a speaker, um, unless they do a bipartisan deal to make Speaker Pro Tem able to do this. Until they have a speaker, they can't bring up a spending bill. And the Senate can't bring it up first. Mar so you know, Marco Rubio pointed out, Senator Marco Rubio pointed out, that there's about $3 billion that have been appropriated for Israel that could be transmitted right now in terms of that Israel, you know, so there's there's military aid that could be transmitted right now with no package that would that meet short-term needs. So that's a that's already appropriated. You don't need a bill. I think it would send an interesting message. I wonder how people would react um, if they're going to have, um, you know, uh, for, foreign aid for foreign wars before you have a, an American speaker. Um, I think the optics don't look thing. good. I think, that, I think they're wise to kind of keep this focused on the gavel. Um, these appropriators want to move all of this legislation and they want to control who gets to be speaker too. Um, and it's up to Republican leaders, including uh, Jordan and, uh, you know, McCarthy and the others. Um, to implore upon the appropriators that they don't get to do both. It's like you want to move appropriations, you need to have a speaker. Because um, if they don't do that, if they if they open up the floor for McHenry to just you know run these bills or whatever, I don't think you get another speaker. They have no incentive. The appropriators one hundred percent go to a speaker unless they get their appropriations. I think they have to hold the line on that. Um, not because I'm for or against whatever they want to vote on in terms of spending. They're going to spend the money um, regardless of who the speaker is in a large capacity. I mean, I mean, you were looking at an 8% discretionary cut, in, um, but you couldn't even get all of the Republicans to vote for that on a CR. 
So right. the odds are you're going to keep on seeing those types of bills um, that are, you know, this middle of the road, uh, you know, uh, 150 Republicans, 150 Democrats vote for right. something like that. Well, um, middle of the road, middle of the road got united on spending issues, but the yeah, appropriators the have DC. one thing to hold over Jim Jordan right now, and that's to deny him the votes um, for speaker. And the Republicans in return have to deny the appropriators the appropriations. If they move on from the speaker battle without having a resolution, uh, it's unprecedented for the, starters. The, the, the has has that ever has, happened, Rick? Um, not, the, not that I know of. Um, yeah, it's embarrassing. Don't, don't embarrass yourselves, guys. Well, I, they could do it. And everybody said, oh, government's working. Here, here's the thing. Should Republicans ever get, get a majority in the House again? And that's not a guarantee. Should they ever get Republican majority in the House again? A new speaker may have to come in and say, we're going to wipe the Appropriations Committee clean and say, if you're an appropriator and you, you voted against Jim Jordan, because you want to spend more money, you don't get to be on appropriations committee anymore and boot them off. And that is a, and effectively clean house and get, and the one big disgrace is people like who are limited government people, you know, they want to talk about and be in the, the authorizing committees. Limited government people need to be on the appropriations committee. They need to bid for it. They need to try to get it because the only way you get an appropriations committee that works for Republican principles is have people who want to cut government become appropriators. That's yeah, and that's a project. By the way, this isn't new. We spent six years working on that project, and uh, and the guy who we were trying to push to be the Appropriations Committee chairman, Tom Graves, ended up getting not chosen by Speaker McCarthy, by Kevin McCarthy, as being the ranking at the time. And as a result, Graves left the Congress, and we kind of were left without a uh, without an advocate. Um, but we spent a lot of time trying to ha get the appropriate uh, with appropriation strategy to try to cut spending and have appropriators be budget be spending cutters rather than big spenders. And, um, and it's a project where we're continuing to work on. I just don't have a horse right now. So that's where we're at. Um, there is one or two good people on the appropriations. Andy, Andy Harris uh, from Maryland is a good is. The one Republican from Maryland, and he's in, on appropriations. He's a good, he's a real good guy. Um, but by and large, it's a challenge. We're going to come back. We're likely going to come back if they have another speaker run at the speaker. So we're going to come back under those circumstances. But um, it is two hours in, so we're going to cut off right now. And uh, please share the take action. Share, Robert, can you put that up one more time? The salsa thing. Um, please share the you know in the comments. You've got the link for. Uh, use this, send it to everybody you know, and let's just bury these guys over the next two hours um, with uh, support for Jim Jordan in such a way that they feel like they have to move forward. And the 20, the 22 feel so much pressure to, uh, to nominate and to elect Jim Jordan speaker that they stop screwing around and we finally get this deal done. With that, thank you very much for attending. We appreciate you and uh, God bless America.